So um, welcome everybody. This is the first Africa Fire Mission uh, inaugural event. A few of you participated in um, our test run a couple of months ago, and we are so excited um, to have you all join us today. So a um, couple of details I want to share with you. Um, Africa Fire, Fire Mission volunteers are providing this, these trainings. Um, everyone who is providing a training for us is a volunteer, and um, we'll have trainers both from um, our participating countries that we work with, as well as um, local, uh, or I'm sorry, trainers in the US. So it will be a combination of participants. If you're interested in training, um, you can let Jose know that um, you're interested in that and we'll make sure that you have his contact information as well. Um, the training is provided free of charge and does not provide a certificate of attendance at this time. Um, we are hoping in the future to be able to offer those. So stick with us and you'll be the first participants to be able to um, receive that benefit when we get that organized. Um, the training is recorded and when possible, we will be able to share uh, the recording with everyone. And um, we'll look for that on AFM's YouTube channel. We're testing that out this week. Um, we will end um, right on time. We will spend an hour, but you're also invited to stay for tea, so to speak. Um, and we invite you to um, join Jose. We'll, um, at the end, host uh, kind of a tea time with you um, to do more with introductions and, and all of those really beneficial things and to have conversation. Um, so the other thing I want to let you know is... Um, that I will be po posting in the chat a um, evaluation toward the end of the training, and I would request that you click on that link to complete the evaluation. Um, we will really be using your um, information to help us with future trainings. So um, also, because we don't have time at the beginning to, um, to be able to do introductions, if you can, we would love for you to use the chat feature and chat an introduction to us. So introduce yourself, um, where you're from, including the country, because I can see now that we not only have Kenya re represented, we definitely have Zambia represented. Hi, Jackson, I see you there. Um, and some others from, um, from Zambia as well. Do we have anyone from Uganda joining us this morning? All right, I'm not sure if they've made it yet. We've got some folks still coming in. So I'm going to get us started because we have a short period of time for this training. And um, I want you to get the full benefit. Um, Jose, would you introduce our presenter today? Yes, I will. Thank you, Nancy. I truly appreciate. Okay. And uh, as you've said, this is the inaugural uh, Africa Fire Mission uh, virtual training, rather, I think the second, and uh, we are really excited to, to host everybody. And uh, I'm excited today to have Errol. Errol is uh, a, a good friend of mine from a long time ago, and uh, he's actually also a trainer, and uh, he's a former trainer at the ICT Fire and Rescue. And uh, he approached me and uh, he was like, uh, why don't we have something going on for the firefighters during this COVID period? And I posed something to him, would you, would you mind to actually start us off? So Errol is uh, quite vast in, uh, as a trainer and uh, he, he trains on EMT matters. And uh, recently he also started training on uh, fire fire service, I mean, fire matters uh, issues. So, Aaron, without ado, I will uh, give you the floor to tell us what you have today for us, and then um, uh, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you very much, Jose. Can you hear me? Everyone can hear me? 
Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you very much, Jose, for the introduction. My name is Errol Siana, and I'll be taking you through uh, our lesson for today, which is all about electrical safety. So most of the things you've heard before, or most of the things you're using them before in your department, in your workplace, at home, but basically you're just going to see how you're going to get safe, or you're going to be safe when you're handling electrical appliances, and also when there's a place where there's electrical or electricity. So quickly, uh, let's go to electrical safety. Okay, so what is electrical safety? Okay, we have some concerns about electricity. Okay, we have some few concerns about electricity, like three, okay? How many sets of appliances or equipment do you use? Okay, when you're handling your safety or electrical appliances, Again, uh, do you still use your hot pots or iron boxes or electric drills each and every moment? For example, in some fire departments, they have electric drills, they have electric cutters, power saws. Those are currents that use electricity. Okay, either they're being charged prior so that they can use it in their department, or they use a plug to plug it in a power source so that they can plug it. Okay, is your iron box cord twisted? Okay, at certain times when you're in your restrooms, uh, when you're resting, when you want to iron your tunic or you want to iron your shirt, or you want to iron your, your trousers, are your iron cords corded or are they just open? Okay, uh, again, uh, how do you handle installed uh, gadgets or cutters? Or again, how do your toddlers, the children at home, or the, the people around you sometimes handle their gadgets? Those are the major concerns about electricity. Remember, uh, electricity kills because of the power, the voltage, when it gets through you or it gets in touch with the, a naked a circuit or a naked wire. Okay. Um, let's move on to the next one. Okay. Uh, for an electricity or electric current to, to happen, it has to have three things. It has to have a source, it has to have uh, an electrical user, and it has to have a wire. Remember, it is a complete circuit. When one of it is not there, then it can't be a complete circuit. So that's why it becomes an electrical current or it becomes a circuit. Moving on to the next one. Okay. There are certain three things that one can need to note or need to check on when they're having handling electricity okay remember electricity travels complete in a person or can travels in a straight line and also electricity travels in the least at least resistant place for they say for example when your hand touches a live wire it has it has an entry point so it has to get a place or some place where, where it can get uh, outside or it can get uh out to move in one way or in one direction. So the least resistant place, that's when it can inject itself. Electricity then travels to the ground. That is very true. Electricity travels to the ground. Remember, you, if you hold a current and you're stepping on a ground without any insulation, electricity will pass through you straight to the ground. So you might get injured, electrocuted, or you might sometimes fall down. As you move on to the next one, Okay, the hazard controls, electrical systems are generally not safe when you handle them when they are naked and they are safe when you handle them with care. Okay, injuries typically occur when one, okay, when the process are, are not incomplete or inappropriate, when you touch a live wire or when you're using your naked hands which has water to touch an electrical wire or electrical voltage, that's a hazard. Again, procedures are not followed. Many a times, most of the uh, electrical equipment we use, we rarely, or at least most of the time, we don't read the manual or read the instructions when you want to use an electrical equipment. For example, an iron box. Uh, another one is sometimes when you have your gadget or your phone, your laptop, uh, your microwave around you, you're not following the instructions of how to use. So it can become a hazard. Okay, then the safety systems are circum circumvented. We assume that uh, you're safe, then the big safety systems. For example, you're told don't place an electrical equipment where there is wet or 
never use an electrical equipment where you see a loose wire or a loose uh, cable. So when you circumvent these safety systems, automatically becomes a hazard. So you might get electrocuted. So we move on to the next one. So there are general, the general voltage overhead power lines. Sometimes when you respond to too many electrical poles or electrical lines. Overhead. The second one is damage insulation. Errol, your sound is um, hanging up a little bit. If you yes. would try muting your camera, let's see if that will help for the moment. Um, good. That sounds a little better. Maybe. So are you still talking about general electrical? You were right at damage insulation? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Well, thanks. Okay, thank you very much. We were at damage insulation uh, when uh, one of our cables or one of your power lines has is damaged. So it can become a very general hazard and also an electrical hazard, which is very, very, very dangerous. Number three, when digging or digging or trenching on uh, buried lines. Sometimes areas where when you respond to, or when you go to, they have power lines which are put on the ground, underground power lines. So it becomes dangerous when you not, or you're not aware of the, the power lines that are on the ground, it becomes very, very a big hazard to you. So when you dig a trench or when you're trying to uh, maneuver around that place, you might get electrocuted. Okay, broken switches or plugs, yes, many a times when you have a broken switch or a plug, you try to put a tape on it so that you cannot uh, replace it. So the best thing is you switch off the power, remove the plug, you replace it and put a new one. When you put an insulation tape around it, sometimes it might melt and also it might uh, give you an electrocution. Uh, we have overloaded circuits. Uh, sometimes when you have the extension cable with an overloaded circuit. And also again, to add on our overloaded circuit, it can be sometimes you might have a power surge. There are times when the power, the electrical power is so high. So you, you have a power surge and the electrical circuit is overloaded. It can blow, it can cause electricity, electrocution, to people around there, there can be a lot of uh, electrical currents around within the circuits and it can be dangerous. So it becomes an electrical hazard. Uh, overhead appliances, yes, another dangerous thing, overhead appliances. And again, static electricity. That is electricity that is not going anywhere. It's just there. Okay. Uh, a practical example is when you're, these, these power transformers, when uh, you pass below it and already turned a power uh, shortage or there was a wire that came out of the big transformer. So the electricity is just around there. So the whole area has static electricity. So when you move around it or you get closer to it, you might get electrocuted. So that's what you call uh, static electricity. So be careful when you're moving around those places where you have static electricity. And again, the last but not the least, the flammable materials, okay? When you put your LPG gas, your gas cylinder around an electrical circuit or electrical uh, voltage, it's highly flammable, okay? Uh, again, when there's a short circuit and then there are flames and sparks moving all over, and there are papers around, or there's a dustbin full of papers around, those are flammable materials. They can light up very fast, okay? There are times when our laptops, okay, the battery is not well, and again, you plug in your power, then it just blows up. So everything around the table gets, it becomes flammable. So you have to be very, very careful. So that makes us move to, uh, before we get to the summary of all the things that we have learned, we move to straight to uh, the rules. We move to straight to the rules. We have 10 rules that we need to see for how we're going to handle ourselves, the safety measures 
for anyone who is uh, using, yes, the golden rules for electrical safety. Okay, there are 10 uh, rules. They are very simple, easy to understand, and some are self-explanatory. I'll just give some few explanations. I'll start with the first one. Uh, electrical apparatus should be serviced, inspected at regular intervals. We have electrical appliances in our rings, in our houses, we are moving with them sometimes here and there. So ensure that they are co uh, completely uh, serviced. And anyone who services your equipment, make sure they are competent and the equipment is properly serviced. And also the standard connectors when joining uh, the beds are, and the cables, they are well insulated. Again, avoid damage and do not expose the cables. That is very correct. And then high temperatures, for example, when there's too much heat or too much it around the cables, you might avoid such scenes. And then corrosive substances, and lastly, sharp edges. When you cut, sharp edges makes uh, to, to wires to be cut and they remain open. And again, this also spoils the insulation. Point number two is uh, only use control or switches for the, for the purpose that they're destined to, okay? Uh, if it does not, uh, the switch is not working, it's broken, and it's not properly uh, functioning, do not use it. Do not interfere with the settings, okay? And again, be careful. Do not disconnect when the power is on, okay? Always make sure the power is off, you switch off everything, then you disconnect. Do not dis uh, uh, connect, connect when the power is on, okay? Disconnecting portable equipments, and again, being careful when you're disconnecting portable equipments, because at times the power is still on and it can also, uh, you can get electrocuted, electrocuted, that becomes a very big hazard, okay? Do not prevent the proper function of the switches, interfering with some. Uh, use your pen, uh, it's very dangerous, okay? So let's move to point number three. Point number three, okay. Never use electrical appliances or electrical plant if it's wet or your hands are wet, okay. Remember, water is a good conductor, okay. And also electricity travels through, through water very fast. So always be careful, okay. And electrical equipment, you're supposed to, when you're handling it, you're supposed to have dry hands, where you're placing your electrical equipment, it's supposed to be dry and not wet. If it's wet, you make sure you dry the part using a, a dry cloth or a dry towel or hand tissues which are dry, then you just place your electrical appliances. And again, uh, when fault occurs with electrical equipment, always be careful, switch it off. Then simply just put it away so that it can, you can, it can be taken for repair later. And also take actions when you're using your uh, electrical equipment, which is faulty. Remember your appliances should not be wet when you're using it, okay? If tears poured on your uh, plants or water or maybe uh, liquid or something, so you have to be careful so that you don't get electrocuted. That leads us to another point, point number four. Uh, point number four, which says also that you also, uh, Point number four, we can go back a little bit. Point number four, uh, as we check on point number four, okay. Uh, when fault occurs, the electrical equipment immediately switch it off. That one we've talked about it. You also check on the supply of the current and the supply of the plug. Also, when you switch it off, you unplug it. You don't switch it off and then it remains intact. When you switch it off, you unplug it so that the current does not continue moving. So, I just had to mention that at point number four. Uh, let's go to point number five. Okay, at point number five, you say immediately report damage if it's uh, in your department and you're using an electrical equipment, report it to your supervisor about the damage of the electrical equipment. Uh, regular reports to a responsible electrical expert, okay? Engage an electrical or an electrician who's, who has an expertise on repairing uh, the equipment by itself. Okay, do not try to repair your equipment by yourself. At times, uh, it might, yes, there are times we, we ourselves, we try to repair it, but again, it has to be, you have to be careful. If you know, really know your equipment, or if you really know your gadget, you can repair it. But 
always involve an electrical expert so that to do that job very well. Again, do not use the apparatus in question to even prevent it or uh, when it's faulty, do not use the apparatus in question. And again, prevent anyone else on using well, the electrical equipment when it's damaged. Or remember, safe use of electrical equipment. Okay, that's the typical indication of equipments. Okay, that moves us to a point number six, uh, which says, point number six that says, do not attempt any DIY work. That means do it yourself work. Okay. No matter, no matter what you're using or the type of equipment you're using or the gadget you're using, unless you have sufficient knowledge of the equipment. Okay, I can repeat that again. Do not attempt any do-it-yourself DIY work. Okay, no matter how well you know it. Uh, you can try to make it or to repair it, but you have to be careful. If you have a proper knowledge of your equipment, of the electrical equipment you're using, and the, you've made it before, it's okay. But if you've never met an electrical equipment before, you have to be very careful. You have to now, if you have sufficient knowledge, you can repair it. If you don't have sufficient knowledge, you don't have to mend it because it's very dangerous. Okay, remember you're dealing with electricity and it's a hazard. It can really, really, really electrocute you and becomes something else. Okay, that uh, information of electricity, do it yourself manuals are always be treated with caution. Okay. You always the manuals of do it yourself be treated with caution. Point number seven. Okay, before using portable tools, find out for whatever precautions must be taken. Find out any precautions that must be taken. Uh, I can mention some few examples. Okay, uh, an example like when you're using an electrical electric drill, when you're using an uh, electric cutter, when you're using an electric spreader, when using an a electric, oh, electric cutter or spreader, it's, you have to be very careful because those are some of the portable tools that you have. Okay, you need to be careful when you're using these kind of tools uh, because they have electricity is passing through and again, the, some, some equipment are bulky and others, that heat of the moment when you're using the equipment, it can be dangerous to you because sometimes uh, things can go wrong at that particular cell. So whatever precaution must be taken, please take care, of the, take care of them. Remember when you're handling these equipments, you have to have proper personal protective equipment, okay? For example, if you're using a drill, you must wear your goggles and you must handle it with proper care using having gloves, okay? When you're using your cutter, you must make sure also your proper PP, you put on your helmet, your, your goggles and your gloves are on the equipment and also the circumstances in which you're using them. Okay, you have to be take care so that it doesn't slip off your hands, it doesn't move from one person to the next, it doesn't get caught within while you're doing, you're using your work. And again, where the cable is passing through, where your wire, you're connecting it through, you have to make sure that no one is interfering or crisscrossing the line. Okay, never use flexible cables as a means of binding materials or equipments, okay? It's a very dangerous thing to use. Never use flexible cables as a means of binding materials or equipment. Now you've used your electrical equipment, now you bind the materials with the flexible cables. Remember, it still has current. It can electrocute you. So that moves us to a point number eight. Our point number eight, which says, okay, point number eight, which says, Never open the cover or remove protective electrical equipment. Never remove the cover or never uh, open the cover or remove the protective shielding of the electrical equipment. Remember, it's, it's, it's used to cover, to insulate the wires that are passing through. And always heed and respect warning signals and other protective devices preventing uh, the live parts. Electricity passes through a live, live media. So if it's protective, it's discovered, remember don't open it up because of curiosity. You want to look at it or you want to touch it. It's a live wire, it's electricity. It will show, it will electrocute you and you might, well, to the extremes, it might make your heart stop. 
because you're going to interfere with the electrical conductivity of your body. Do not remove, interfere with, or ignore equipment for demarcating or demarcating of areas. Okay, if it's worn out, it's worn out. If you're not using it, don't use it. After use, uh, store it nicely, place it in a nice place. You're going to use it again. Remember also, after you've used your equipment, you clean it, you make it, uh, you wipe it nicely with a dry cloth. Then you place your stone it. It's not wet. It's a dry place so that you can use it some other time. Okay. Screens or barrier of insulation uh, are good conductors. So you also be careful. That leads us to a second last point, which is point number nine. Okay. Remember also you have to insulate the covers, the non-conductors. Okay. So point number nine says, an electrical work may be carried out in the vicinity of electrical plant, okay? An electrical work may only be carried out in the vicinity of electrical plant. If it is a must, as for, if it is a must to be carried out anywhere else, supervision of the responsible electrical expert must be there, okay? If you need to carry work in a place or an area where you're handling lots of electrical equipment, you must make sure you have a supervisor or you're responsible for the electrical expertise or the person you're having is within around you is an electrical expert. Examples of such activities are laying tiles on the floor of a transformer, painting on the vicinity of an electrical uh, apparatus, and again, tree falling, or again, pruning in the vicinity of an overhead electrical wire. Okay, construction of work in such stations, in the substations where there are electricity. You have to be very careful. You have to have someone who has the knowledge of electricity so that when you're doing this work or doing this job around that area, you don't get electrocuted. So that moves us to our last point number 10 before we go to our summary. So our point number 10 says, when any work is to be done in the vicinity of overhead lines or underground supplies cables, one, avoid contact with the lines, okay? Remember the overhead power cables, when you're working around them or within them or where you are, avoid contact with the lines. Comply with the rules and regulations with which apply to that particular area. Remember where there are over, overhead power lines, there are a lot of uh, danger signs and a lot of warnings, so comply with those warnings. Uh, point number three, cases of vicinity of overhead, you must watch, watch where you're working, watch where you're standing, are uh, there any electricals overhead? So take a look at the signs, be careful of your environment, take a look of your environment where you're working. And again, if you're transporting things, equipments from one particular station to another or one place to another, as you're transporting, are those equipment so high or so tall that you can touch the overhead cables? So you have to be very careful as you're doing your transport work so that whatever you're transporting does not touch the overhead cables. And again, you don't get electricity, doesn't travel through you. And then work with an elevated platform. If where you're standing, there's a lot of static electricity and there's a lot of uh, electrical field around you, make sure you work where there's an elevated platform. That means, you yourself, you don't get into contact with the ground, okay? So that when this, this, the electric, electrical field is around there, you put something like a non-insulator, for example, dry wood or a very hard plastic, which is a, not, not, a, not a good conductor of electricity. So it becomes elevated. So you yourself personally, you don't touch the field where it's around where it has electricity. And again, you don't step to where uh, there's electricity so you don't get electro electrocuted. So in summary, as we finish all this, uh, the, all this education about electricity, electrical field, in summary, uh, this is what you're saying in summary. Remember electricity is not good, okay? So one, electricity will try to reach the ground, okay? Or whichever means it gets to use through you. Okay, electricity will get through the ground. If you touch the electricity, either way, it's hard to reach the ground. A good example is when a lightning strikes, of course, when it strikes, it strikes from the skies. So it has to, electricity has to go straight to the ground. Point number two, 
even the small voltage from your phone or from your appliance can cause a serious injury. Okay, I repeat, even the small voltage from your phone or from your home appliances or from whatever you have can cause a serious injury. It's electricity. Your body does not accommodate this. It can't accommodate a huge voltage of electricity. At point number four, always inspect the power tools and cords and use them and, and repair them. Or if you want to use them, be careful when they're damaged. So when you're using your power tools, be careful. Check the cords, check if they're damaged, okay? If they're damaged, don't use them, okay? If they're open, don't use them. Why? Because when you plug them into the electricity or you plug them into the socket, when electricity comes through, you'll get electrocuted. Or if you don't electro get electrocuted, your friend or your colleague might get electrocuted. Lastly, do not attempt to repair electrical equipment unless trained or qualified. I can repeat that. Do not attempt to repair electrical equipment unless you're trained or qualified. If you have the qualifications of uh, repairing electrical equipment, yes, you can repair them. And again, if you're not qualified to repair any electrical equipment, don't do any repairs with the electrical equipment. Remember, it's good to follow instructions. It's good to read the manual when using electrical equipment so that you don't get electrocuted. And at your workplace, all the electrical equipment you have in your home states where you have all the electrical equipment, in your offices, wherever you're moving, always be careful when you're handling electrical equipment. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for this wonderful session that we've had about electrical equipment. And that's what we had for you today. So thank you very much. So now I welcome questions. Okay, so thank you very much. We would love to have some questions. Um, Elijah, I see your hand is raised there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and unmute your audio. Go ahead. Uh, good evening, everyone. Good My evening. name is Elijah from Nyeri Fire Station. Would you kindly be able to share the notes of what have been learned? Because some of us came late, please. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, yes, we're going to share. I'm going to share the notes. Uh, yes, with you. And uh, yes, they're available. So I'll share immediately. We finish the session. I will share the notes. Okay. I have one question. Okay. Um, many a times in our workstations, we have places where the equipments that we have that are portable and they need to be charged before we put them back into our, into our rigs before we go for a, a call or something. So what is the best measure to use when you're charging your electrical equipment that you're going to use? that is placed in part of your equipment at work. So what is the best measure to, or how do you go about it? Um, hello, Aaron. Hi, BK. Uh, uh, this is uh, on behalf of ICT1, is to congratulate and uh, uh, the good information. But uh, just to clarify something you mentioned, yes. instead of electrical cutters, we have uh -huh. uh, powered tools. Uh, it's yes. important to know that uh, we have powered tools. They yes. can be either electrically or generator powered. Uh, uh -huh. Instead of saying electrically cutting tools, we yes. should say powered tools. So, but uh, mm. all in all, it was yes, yes. So good. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for yes for that collection. Thanks a lot, Kimura. Oh, Aaron, um, yes, maybe just, just, just to a point to note uh, yes. uh, that uh, we, we, we have uh, different, uh, different countries and different uh, voltage uh, yes. where for safety of ourselves and tools that we use, uh, and uh -huh. then either we are using direct current or alternating current for uh -huh. safety of us and our tools, it is yes. important to note that uh, 
uh, different countries have different power outage, and it is very important for anyone using that tool first yes. to understand where it is and what their, um, their, their voltage is for, for their own safety. Because if you use a tool, for example, that is uh, powered by one, 110 voltage, and mm -hmm. you use it in Nairobi where the voltage is 240, then yes. you'll be putting yourself at risk. Correct, correct. Thank you. Okay, uh, if I can add on one or two things, uh, what you're saying is very true. Remember, most of the time, the maximum voltage is 240 or 220, depending on uh, the type of tool you're using. And what you're saying is very correct. So if you know the voltage of uh, what equipment you're using, because some of the equipments have higher voltage, some of the equipments have a very low voltage, but you need to be careful, you need to watch the direct current or alternate current. Okay, remember the electrical circuit has three things. It has a wire, it has a switch, and also it has the current itself, so that it becomes an electrical circuit. Thank you very much for your input. Uh -huh. So just a heads up is that uh, this is an interactive class. So we would want you to actually get to participate because in future, uh, even as we get to start the virtual, uh, uh, this virtual meeting, rather virtual classes, we might need you to participate. And I thank you, the ICT team, uh, just to uh, make it more, more great. We, we appreciate you. If you have any, any input, everybody just uh, come in and uh, give your input. It's not a one-man show. It's all of us together in this. Excellent. Excellent. And um, I see there's, there's a couple comments here that we can use. Um, so this one is, um, what's your opinion on location of power cutout and construction in regard to electric safety and fire? Okay. Um, if many a times at the construction site, you have to be careful to, when you're responding to electrical safety. One, we need to get to know where the cutout is, the power cutout is, and two, uh, the, the power lines, how they are passing through when you're going to a construction site. Uh, in a construction site, you need to look at the size and the type of the building so that when you are approaching a building and you want to put out the fire, you are not too near the power lines and you are not uh, the power lines which are there, the power is not yet on. Uh, most of the time you can find in some areas around a locality, there are power lines and transformers within the, the construction site. So one, the first thing you do is when you get at the vicinity, make sure the power is off. Make sure there's no live electricity. Okay, how do you make sure that there's no live electricity? you get in touch with the power company so that you tell them to switch off the power so that you can proceed, okay? Uh, don't be tempted to get hold of the wires. Don't be tempted to touch the live wires or the power lines because you might get electrocuted, okay? I hope I've answered your question. Um, hello. Yeah, hello. Maybe an addition, uh, and that's why it's important to note, especially in Kenya, uh, on yes. the issue of cutout and uh, putting off electricity for yes. our own safety. That's why it's important for everyone who is in a fire station to yes. work closely with other utility companies like Kenya Power, because uh, there are other legal issues, especially on on uh, on power lines which have more voltage, more than three thousand. When we are responding and it's near a line, it's important to work closely with utility companies who will help you to put off fire for your own safety and safety of others. But uh, in most buildings, we have uh, where you can just push a button and put off electricity, but that is not never enough. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, good evening, guys. Good evening. I would like to make a comment on that. 
Uh, basically, for, for most of the buildings, we tend to tell, we tend to look for the cutout places. Most of them you know, are outside the building. Okay. And, and that's what I was trying to discuss with the Kenya Power guys. I have a friend in Kenya Power. Yes. I was trying to communicate with them and telling them they should uh, at least consult the fire department uh -huh. when they are going to, appr to approve these major building on uh, construction, on how to put off um, places to mount the, some of the circuit breakers, which are intact. And yes, yes. Uh, he was telling me that that's a project that we need to start with them uh -huh. because uh, I've moved around Nyeri. Uh -huh. I have some few buildings that we are, I'm trying to target uh -huh. because most of them are high rise buildings. Yes. And even for matters of uh, these buildings that are residential, uh -huh. most of them you get to co you come to a point you find the meter boxes are always inside the house. Most of them. Because yes, they yes. are saying it's um, it's security purposes. Yeah, very true. I was, trying, I was trying to raise the issue with them and telling them what will I do if a fire break up, a fire breaks out mm -hmm. at night, mm -hmm. and the owner is not available or the owner they have already vacated the house. So you say me, I will come with my branch and fire and water and foam, and by I don't know, no one knows where the powers are. So I was trying to tell them if they can make, they can try and bring us something that uh, it's more advanced. Then in case of fire, it won't uh, it will cut off, not from inside the building, but around outside the the, the post, their post. Uh -huh. So we we're, were trying to discuss with him about that one, but Sibado's uh, Jabata enough feedback. But okay. I, I think that's a way we yeah. can be able to go with it. We try to, in, to incorporate everyone for mm -hmm. the EMS services and see that uh, maybe that yes. one can come to pass. Because uh -huh. I have a friend, Juzi, Walienda kwa nyumba ya nyeli kona stima, but hawako wana jua. So, waingu watu, okay, now those ones that were by us, wali kuna watu wali kwa wana gonga ongo na shock. So, I was trying to talk about that. Okay, uh, if I may comment on it a little bit, eh? uh, two years back, there was a law that was being passed in relation to how houses are being constructed or how buildings are constructed. Or uh, they wanted to come up with one plan or one formula of all the buildings that are being constructed uh, five years from now to be of the same design, same pattern. But that bill, that law is still in process. And again, uh, the power company, the power company, the Kenya Power Lighting Company that you're having today, they are trying to outface the overhead power lines. In some areas, they are trying to go to use the underground power lines in some areas, but it's not a complete thing. At the moment, they are they're rolling out slowly so that they can see how it goes about because there are areas where you can't do an underground power line there are areas where there's too much overhead power lines. And again, what you're saying is very correct. In some houses, you can get the switch is inside the house. So like I'm, I'm answering it, the, the, the law or the, the bill is being in, in its, its in initial stages because they say all the buildings or all the houses need to have one design so that when a fire breaks out or in case of an emergency, the switch is outside the house and then it can be it can be put off and again also in some areas when you walk around they, they are underground power lines but what you're saying is very correct what we need to do we need to be vigilant different areas have different power lines there are areas where there are too many overhead power lines and there are areas where there are very few overhead or power lines that are there there are areas whereby you can see the main switch is outside the house or maybe outside the main gate. There are areas where you can't even notice where there's a main switch or the power switch. So what I can urge all of us is when you're responding to a fire, always be careful. Be observant and also look at if where the power lines are, are passing through, if there's any electrical hazard, and also as also you, you, you putting out the fire, you are not too close to the power lines and also you don't get electrocuted. 
because at times you might respond to a fire and also the fire started way earlier but then it may be the power line was hit and it was down nobody saw it so while you're trying to put out the fire when you pour your water you start getting electrocuted so you have to be very careful immediately you stop then then you get the number of the kenya power company out of that area then you call them so that they can put out the power line so that needs flexibility and you need to act very fast because in a real scenario when the fire is out it's reaction and also getting to quickly very fast put out the fire so i can comment on those two points thank you very much for your input um also we have folks from other countries who may not be yes, calling yes, kenya yes. power <laughs> so they're local power companies <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. we're international right <laughs> yes yes we are yes we are <laughs> Apologies, apologies, the local power company in your area. <laughs> okay, any other comment, question? Thank yes. you, Errol, for your participation. Um, this is a great um, endeavor, and we are so excited to have everyone join us. Um, I think all told, when I've looked at all of the screens and everyone that's been able to join us, we've had more than 50 participants today. Um, and we're, we're really excited that everyone was able to join us. So, thank you very much for that. And um, everyone who's joined us. Um, just a couple of things in a moment I'll be posting an evaluation um, you are all welcome to stay on and have some informal conversation um, but we're really excited about the future of these trainings and the opportunities that will um, be coming in the future um, so please 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 um, post your comments let us know um, in, in the survey especially, um, what um, we can do better. I, we've definitely seen your um, questions and your thoughts already. Um, and so we'll be taking those into account as we go along. Um, next week at the same time with the same registration as you had this week, um, you don't have to re-register if you've already registered, but people can still register. So if you know some folks that weren't able to register for today, um, you can still register. Next week, Ryan Anderson from the Velva Fire Department in North Dakota in the U.S., who was part of AFM Kenya 2019, will be providing a training. And he'll be um, talking about effective use of ladders for firefighting. Um, he'll be looking at um, some practical ways that you can um, use ladders um, and how you can practice with them at your fire stations as well. So you'll want to do that. Um, we just want to thank you all. We are so excited about um, to see you all um, in this time of COVID-19 getting creative about how to provide training to provide services and um, we're grateful to all of you for participating. Um, with that, Jose, I'm going to pass um, the baton to you uh, to just facilitate some additional um, comments and um, discussions. All right. Thank you very much, Nancy, for uh, giving me this opportunity. And uh, more so, Aaron. Aaron, for actually being available. Big up to you, sir. I truly appreciate you, even for uh, being available to teach us more about uh, electricity. As I said, uh, I usually say you never stop learning, yeah? And the, the day you stop learning is the, is the day you stop growing. So with me, I've, today I've really learned a lot, especially in regards to uh, in the, the fire scene, how I can really protect myself uh, uh, when I'm putting out uh, fires. Um, going forward, even as Nancy has said, we shall be have, we shall be here every Wednesday from 4 p.m. until 5 p.m. and uh, we shall be having indoor sessions and outdoor sessions, practicals, and also like today, what Errol has taken us to a class session. Uh, even uh, to to let the cat out of the bag, 
we shall be we shall be learning about uh, SCBAs. We shall be learning about ICS and a lot more.